When it comes to snails, you know me, I am on team kill it with fire because I mean, I don't think they're creepy looking. I just don't like the population boom aspect, but at least half of you out there think they're God's gift to mankind. So I was at Petco, I saw they had a bazillion mystery snails and I decided to take one home. So here's my honest review. Let's go with the pros first. Appearance wise, they're fine. They come in lots of different colors like magenta, golden yellow, even kind of a bluish ivory colored. They only get about two inches in diameter at max. And so, yeah, that's good for me because I mostly keep nano tanks. And then when they're really happy, their antennae are out and they're really long and kind of cool looking. So yeah, nothing against their appearance. Breeding wise, I really like that they're not hermaphrodites where they can just reproduce on their own. So you have to have at least one of each sex in order to have breeding occur. And if you only have one snail, they're not gonna make little eggs everywhere like nerite snails do. So that's one thing that really annoys me about them. Mystery snails don't do that. I heard they're really easy to breed. I haven't done it personally, but apparently you can just kind of lower the water line. The female will crawl up there, lay an egg cluster, and there's plenty of videos out there on how to take care of it. Activity level. These are one of the fastest moving snails that I've seen at least commonly available in the aquarium hobby. They don't burrow in the substrate and hide all the time. You'll see them front and center. So I really like how basically the energy level is pretty high for a snail. They're kind of exciting. They're also really interesting to look at. I think one of the coolest things they do is they climb up all the way to the top of the tank and then they'll just let go and kind of parachute all the way to the ground. They don't seem to care. And then yes, if they do fall upside down, they know how to write themselves. So you don't have to go in there and help them out. They totally know how to take care of it, but it's kind of cool to just see a, a falling snail every once in a while in your aquarium. Another weird thing that I didn't know mystery snails do is they have this weird breathing siphon that comes out the side of their head. So if you see what looks like a strange organ coming out, that is perfectly normal. They're using it to inhale in water, pass it over their gills, and then they exhale it out the other side. And this is used because they can go out of water for a period of time, as long as their gills are moist, um, to lay their eggs usually, but it does mean you may need a tight fitting lid to make sure they don't escape. On the ranking of fish and creatures that escape. I don't think they're as bad as let's say in an Amano shrimp. Amano shrimp seem to try to find every single crack possible to escape for some reason. But mystery snails, at least for me, they tend to stay underwater. Now, what about usefulness? A lot of people get snails because they're really great scavengers, a good cleanup crew member. And I think mystery snails personally for me are pretty voracious. They will go after any kind of random food crumbs or my favorite is they will eat all the melted leaves that come on your crypts when you first plant them, which is really cool because at least for me, I find it hard to get off the stringy, slimy bits of crypt melt. But then I put my mystery snail in the tank and she just ate everything, which was awesome. The last reason why I really like mystery snails is because of their hardiness. I don't know about you, but I've actually had a little bit of trouble keeping nerite snails in my aquariums. And I think it's because once all of the algae is gone, they end up starving. Even if I feed them snail specific food, it seems like the fish in the tank always eat it up first before the very, very slow nerite snail um, eventually gets to it. Versus mystery snails, I've totally seen mine just bowl over other fish to get to that rapashi gel food and they will just push everybody out of the way and get their fill of the meal. So I really like how hardy they are. As for cons, I do think they prefer to eat fish food over algae. So for me personally, they are not the best algae eaters. I don't know. What do you guys think? Sheila from Life with Pets did kind of a competition between the two, the nerite snails and mystery snails and the nerite snails definitely won versus Jason from Primetime Aquatics says they're about the same. Tell me in the comments what you think. Another thing to note is if you have softer water like I do, you will definitely start to see pitting or kind of dense divots in their shells. And that's because they don't have enough minerals to create a healthy shell. So add some minerals in the water, such as using Wonder Shell or Seachem Equilibrium, and then feed them some crustacean specific food like shrimp food or Hikari crab cuisine, all of those contain like calcium and some more minerals that they need to ingest in order to create those healthy shells. Another thing that kind of annoys me about them is 
I can't really tell when they're sleeping versus when they're dead. <laughs> like to me, they seem to sleep in really weird positions where like the shell might be even slightly tilted and not on the ground and the body is just kind of and I'm like, oh, are you alive? Are you dead? I don't want to have to stick my hand in the tank every single time. But if this does happen to your snail and you're not sure if they're dead or not, uh, usually the trap door is open. Although again, my snails, I've seen them do this even when they're asleep or resting uh, and then they'll smell really bad. <laughs> so just be aware that's something, I don't know. You tell me if you know a secret to knowing when snails are alive versus dead. <laughs> Are mystery snails worth it? Uh, you know, for me, I would say they're great scavengers, okay algae eaters, but I mostly get them for the entertainment value. So for example, my daughter ended up getting another mystery snail for her kid's tank. And I think if you have a family and you're wanting to get them more involved in aquarium keeping, a mystery snail might be something that would capture their interest more. However, if snails are really creepy to you and you're just not into them, there are actually other, many other beautiful invertebrates that you could consider. I personally like red cherry shrimp and I have a whole playlist over here on how to take care of them, so check it out. Take time to enjoy your aquariums and I'll see you in the next video.